unless our videos are comprised of one continuous shot, we as editors use transitions to connect multiple shots together to form our completed video. Transitions are effectively animations that can be used at the beginning or end of a clip, or even in between two consecutive clips on your LumaFusion timeline. By default, we join two shots together with a basic cut transition, where our shots play one after the other. But if we want to spice things up a little, we can add artistic transitions to our clip. We do this in LumaFusion in one of two ways. Firstly, by dragging our chosen transition onto our clips from the media library and choosing their position and length. Or alternatively, by tapping the add clip icon and transition option at the bottom of our screen, where a default cross dissolve will be inserted with its position and length determined by the initial position of the playhead on our timeline. But although transitions are a fun way to add movement to our video, they are so much more than just a way to animate our shots. As video editors, we can use them cleverly to help us tell a story, perhaps signifying a shift in a film's storyline, the passage of time, a change of emotion, switch to another point of view, or even just spice up the narrative. So to use transitions effectively, rather than just picking them at random, it's useful to think about how you can use them to move your story forward, guiding your viewer from scene to scene. A cross dissolve gently fades two scenes into each other, used at the end of one clip and the beginning of the next. This blends the content together for the length of the transition, and is often used in film and television programmes to indicate a change in scene and time. Longer cross dissolves tend to symbolise a lot of time has passed between the scenes, whereas a quick cross dissolve conveys energy and speed. They can also be a great way to show what a character is thinking or feeling, as a cross dissolve provides a certain dreamlike quality, so if used carefully, we as the audience can take a peek at what's inside their head. A fade is used to gradually turn a scene into a single colour, usually black or white. Fade ins occur at the beginning of a film or scene, while fade outs are at the end. Fade into black usually symbolises the end of a scene or storyline, or it can also be used to add drama in between clips, especially when partnered with dramatic music. Fading to white, on the other hand, gives a lighter feel to the footage and can help storytellers evoke a sense of hope or joy, or even portray a happy memory or dream. Adding a wipe transition to your clips will reveal your shots from one side of the screen to the other. Placing the transition in between two shots will replace the first shot with the previous scene like this. Wipes come in all directions, from classic styles to spins, and are often used to change the story's location, but when used carefully, can also show situations that are unresolved, almost as if you're transitioning to another storyline and telling the audience that you'll come back to that storyline later. We can also use the push transition to create a similar effect. This transition literally pushes one clip out of the way to make space for another, often creating a playful, comical effect for your video. Now, of course, there are many different ways to employ these techniques, and there are no hard and fast rules, but if you can get into the mindset of using transitions mindfully, you'll help to evoke emotion in your video projects and keep your audiences hooked. There are lots of transitions to play and experiment with here, so make sure you explore all of them. You can preview them first by tapping each one in the media library and watching in the preview box how clip A moves into clip B, but the best way, in my opinion, is to see what they look like with the content you're actually editing. You've always got the undo icon or the rubbish bin to delete if you don't like it. After all, you might just surprise yourself and find a creative style that really suits your project and the story you're trying to tell. So with that in mind, here are a few tips for using transitions more effectively. Number one, use transitions sparingly so they maintain their novelty. Too many and your audience will tire of them and they'll just lose their effectiveness. Number two, remember we want to use them to serve a storytelling purpose each time, not just thrown in whenever we feel like it. Think about what you're trying to say and why that transition will be particularly useful. Number three, be sure to keep your transitions consistent. Using a few of your favourites in one project is fine, but throwing every effect into your video risks looking cheesy and, let's face it, not very professional. Number four, get creative with them. Now, of course, you're going to be using transitions on your video content, but also try them on your logos, your titles and your text in LumaFusion, creating interesting effects and graphic overlays. Number five, remember they can sit in different places on your clips to achieve different results. 
So get creative and layer up your work to push the boundaries of what you can achieve. If you want to take your use of transitions up a level and create your own, you can do so using a technique called keyframing. Now, if you haven't tried this yet, we've got a beginner's guide here on the LumaTouch YouTube channel. For help with anything from transitions to layering and presets to audio effects, or any of the technicalities of using LumaFusion, come and join me for a live online workshop where you can ask me any burning questions you might have. Remember, editing is supposed to be fun, guys, so enjoy using transitions and see what they can add to your own video projects. For more tips, tricks, and techniques from the LumaTouch Academy, I'll see you right here next week.